In this video, I will be analyzing Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad and A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. The analysis will include a short overview of the story, then the main theme that I will focus on, and then a thorough analysis. So let's get started with our first story, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. In this story, Joseph Conrad retells the story of Marlowe's job as an ivory transport, transporter down the Congo. Through his journey, Marlowe develops an intense interest in investigating Kurtz, an ivory procurement agent, and Marlowe is shocked upon seeing what the European traders have done to the natives and also at the dark nature of humans. The theme I will focus on it go is good versus evil, or more relatable to the story, uh, civilization versus savagery. Heart of Darkness presents the theme of good versus evil as Marlowe goes through the journey of self-discovery and observes the true characteristics of human nature. Marlowe's view of humans drastically changes as he voyages on his journey to the Congo in Africa. He begins the journey by recognizing how London was, quote, one of the dark places of the earth, end quote. This demonstrates how Marlowe views his role in Congo and thinks that him and his people will help the Africans civilized just like the Romans helped the English. Conrad uses this sta statement by Marlowe to characterize U Europeans who believe that they are completely civilized and it is impossible for them to return to primitive savage behavior. Marlowe's world changes immensely as he reaches the dark world, Africa, and discovers where the true darkness lies. Marlowe encounters various situations that expose him to the reality of the company. Marlowe's introduction to the reality occurs right at the coast of Congo as he sees decaying machinery littering a landscape cluttered by dying men and enslaved workers. This graphing scene absolutely foreshadows Marlowe's further encounters with the hor horrific imperialized state of Congo. As the story moves forward, Marlowe approaches the graphic climax that humorously shocks both Marlowe and the reader. Marlowe describes the skull on the sticks as, quote, Here it was, black, dried, sunken, with closed eyelids, a head that seemed to sleep at the top of that pole, end quote. Kurtz is responsible for this horrific image that Marlowe and the reader have to witness. This graphic climax truly shows the extremity and dangers of complete freedom. Kurtz, who has been transformed because of this excessive freedom and power, demonstrates Conrad's point that the privilege of dominating weaker people is very risky as it can lead to devastating results and truly bring out the dark side inside of humans. Kurtz came to Congo to complete great acts of, quote, humanizing, improving, instructing, end quote. The wilderness and freedom allows Kurtz to reveal his true darkness, and with cruelty, he built the highest supplying ivory source for the company. Kurt absolutely contradicts the company as he reveals his true dangerous and greedy self instead of hiding it behind the cloak of, quote, humanistic, end quote, behavior. Conrad uses Kurtz as a symbol of human nature and presents his viewpoint that excessive power and freedom regresses human moral because it brings out the darkness that lies within. Marlowe and Heart of Darkness argue that civilized humans can turn to savagery in a world without any restrictions. Conrad makes the point that it is essential to have law and order so humans do not regress to their dark side and cause massive destruction of the world. Now moving on to our next story, A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. For this story, I will do a short overview, state my theme, and then follow it by a thorough analysis of that theme. So let's get started with the overview. Clockwork Orange presents a dystopian society featuring a subculture of extreme youth violence. The protagonist, Alex, is part of a gang that makes up the subculture of youth violence and his violent, unlawful actions get him into trouble 
and send him to the authorities. Alex narrates his violent exploits and his experiences with state authorities intent on reforming him. The story overall asks the reader to introspect and determine what it is to truly be human. The theme I will be focusing on is free will because free will is essentially what Anthony Burgess wants to explore in this story. Moving on to the analysis. Clockwork Orange develops the theme of free will through its protagonist, Alex. The story forces the reader to face a dilemma where their power to choose ceases to exist for the assumed safety of others. Alex exercises his free will to commit horrific crimes that he perceives to be beneficial and enjoyable. Through his actions, he leaves the reader to question whether if Alex's actions can be accepted as humane. The story starts with gruesome spine-tingling crimes that Alex and his gang commit without any guilt or fear. They appear to enjoy these activities as Burgess presents it with such a delightful tone in the quote. We bashed into them both with a couple of half-hearted talk chalks making them cry and on we went. Burgess directly exposes the nature of Alex in the beginning and allows the reader to be the judge of whether or not Alex can be considered as a human. To place the reader in such a situation, Burgess heavily relies on his delightful tone because it shows to the reader how the youth functions in this dystopian society and makes the reader think are Alex's actions worse than the actions of other humans that the readers have already witnessed. Alex is unsurprisingly betrayed by his gang and the story takes a turn as the free-willed boy clashes with a crushing reform system. Alex's time under the horrendous reforming system introduces Burgess's viewpoint regarding the importance of free will. The prison and the reforming system do not treat Alex well and they brainwash him to change from what he naturally is and convert him into a quote a clockwork orange, end quote. Burgess uses the symbol of a clockwork orange to directly state his point that, quote, when a man cannot choose, he ceases to be a man, end quote. This concept is the core of the story, and Burgess uses it to prove that unnatural action damages the soul and turns humans into machinery. Burgess clearly wants to convey that rather than demolishing evil by physical brute force, we need to allow humans to change naturally. Otherwise, man will truly not be a man as his soul would be destroyed. The reformed Alex returns to his original state after going through an intense surge of events and independently finds the meaning of life for him. After his release from the prison, Alex is not the same person. He begins contemplating suicide and questions his life. After some time, Alex gets captured by F. Alexander, who plays classical music because it evokes violence in Alex. He wants to bring back Alex to his original state and wants to use him to go against the government. Alex, after a long struggle, jumps out of a window and ends up in a hospital where he eventually returns back to his original mind. After some time, Alex is able to see that he wants to live peacefully and have a family. This sudden change of character illustrates how Burgess wants the reader to see that true change can only happen through experience. He is reinforcing his previous point of letting the soul live naturally while demonstrating that change is only possible through free will. Anthony Burgess, through a clockwork orange, ultimately argues that free will is the key to improvement for humans, and if natural orders of things is changed, then humanity will not survive. Instead, all of us would basically be a clockwork orange. Thank you for watching the video.